All right. So good day, everyone. Welcome to another recorded video of ours, which we are going to discuss another topic. Okay. So, but before that, let us have our short opening prayer before anything else. So let us pray in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, do we offer you everything we do today, all our works, our joys, and our sorrows. Everything will be an act of love for you. Holy Mary, Saint Joseph, Saint Joaquin, and Saint Anne, and guardian angels, intercede for me so that I may be deserved to be helped and saved today and always. Prehendal Pilar, pray for us in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. So, um, the topic that we are going to discuss for today is a new topic that might help you for the following. Uh, discussion that we're going to talk about this quarter right so but before that let's have a short recall of what we discussed last time in our um, calculus right so uh, we talked about functions right so we were able to identify what is a function and what compose uh, what does a, com a function composed of no so when we say function in notation your y no we could simply uh, tell that the notation of your y is f of x correct f of x right and also uh when we say f of x it is composed of two things no in order for you to have f of x we have f of x as your output. Output. Okay. And your x will be your input. Okay. Input. Alright. So, therefore, in order for you to have your y or your graph, you, know, you need an input in order for you to have the final output or the graph. Right. So, you need the value of x. Okay. So, uh, I just want you to remember, no, um, in dealing with the functions, how to identify functions, many to one, one to many, one is to one, no, uh, with the concept of the uh, uh, the Muslims, wherein uh, one husband is able to marry many women, right? So, uh, we know that one is too many is not allowed but many is to one is allowed right one is to one is allowed many is to one is allowed all right so uh before we deal with uh the other uh the new topic that we're go we should so, uh, supposed to be that we are going to discuss i'm going to show you this graphs that i want you to remember okay so this six basic functions Okay, six basic uh, functions. Uh, I hope that I, uh, I want you to remind, uh, remember this one, and I hope that you will recall this uh, functions all throughout our quarter. Okay, so it's really important for us to remember. If you saw this kind of graph, what do we call into this kind of graph? How about this one? Okay, how about this one? Right, so these are the six basic gra basic graphs of functions that you should be familiar with. First is I am just going to give you a quick uh, uh, initials in order for you to remember all those six six functions. But all right, so when we have this first three, always remember the initials C, I, then A. CIA, uh, in some cases, you know what is CIA, right? But in this graphs, no, in six basic functions, when we say C, it is our constant function. Okay, po? When we say I, it's our identity function. And when we say A, it's our absolute value function. Okay, po? Uh, well, for the um this lower functions no when we have the lower functions please remember the initials s q 
C. Okay po? So, in our SQC, just to rem uh, remember that you are going to square and cubic. Uh, just remember that you have square, square, let's just say you have uh, R square, then you have R cubic. Okay? So, when you square, SQ as square, then you follow with cubic. Okay? When you square, you follow with cubic. Okay po? In order for you to recall, what are these basic uh, functions? Or six basic functions of graphs po. Okay? Alright. Alright. So, our new topic for this time, for our video, is... None other than uh, functions, operations, and composition of functions. So when we say function operations, no, from the word functions, it is still in line with functions. Okay, po? still in line with the functions. Uh, it's just that we're going to integrate and uh, uh, connect what are these operations. And I know that uh, you are familiar with what are the fundamental operations that we have in mathematics, correct? So, when we say fundamental operations, these are multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, correct? So, uh, in composition of functions, later on, I'm going to show you how to deal with composition of functions wherein a function will be the input of another function, okay? So, that is composition of functions, but uh, before that, uh, let's deal first with the function operation. So, when we say function operation, from the word function itself, the function, integrating to the operations. And what are these operations? Okay, so what are these operations? We have multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Alright, so when we have a function, we have, when we have f of x in a graph, no, in a partition thing. For example, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Okay? And 1, 2, 3, and so on. Okay? Alright. So, let's just say your f of x is this graph. This is your f of x. Okay? I'm sorry. That is your f of x. Uh, let me erase this one. For example, this is your f of x. Okay? This is f of x. f of x. Okay? Then, in inside inside that Cartesian plane, no, you have a graph. And that is your f of x. But inside that Cartesian plane, you have another graph. And this is what we call as a function as well. We cannot just simply tell that, it's, that it is not a function. No? It is a function as well. But can we tell that it is also a f of x? Can we say also that it is an f of x? No. Instead of using f of x once again, you could write it down as g of x. Okay po? Or any, or any uh, letter that you would prefer. Okay po? Most likely uh, g of x, f of x, k of x, alright? So, in other words, that when we have two functions in one Cartesian plane, we could uh, simply get no get what would be the result when we add them, when we subtract them, all right? So using the operations that we have or the fundamental operations that we have, no? Here are some examples of uh, function operations that might help you in the following examples that we have. Okay, so in addition, okay, in addition, we have this first function which is f, and the second function which is the g. How is that, sir? How how uh how do we deal with that kind of form? So when we have this kind of form, it only states that inside your Cartesian plane, okay, isn't it that you have this function, which is f of x? If this is your f of x. And you have g of x, okay, g of x. It only means that if you're going to add them, 
could be represented as f plus g of x. Okay po? Alright. So, let's go back to the table that I presented to you. No? So, it only means that you are adding, no? you are adding two functions of an input. No? Then you could have this f of x plus g of x. Alright, so how are we going to deal in this kind of uh, functions? Uh, before I show you the process of each operations that we have, I'm going to show you, uh, I want you to uh, remember this subtraction, multiplication, and division uh, kinds of uh, equations. All right. So when we have subtraction, you could see that you, the function of your f will be subtracted by g functions. But, okay, so therefore you could have function of x or f of x uh, minus g of x. And same goes by when you multiply a function to another function. No? Uh, function of f of x multiplied by g of x. This will be the result. Okay. So it seems like you are distributing the x inside. Okay. Alright. So um, let's deal with the division already. So we have f of uh, f, f divided by g no? of x. No? Knowing that when you divide the f by your g wherein x will be your input no when we are going to uh, transpose this one in the much simplest way it could be uh, it would be f of x divided by g of x okay pa? gets all right so uh anyways uh when we say uh, division it could be represented as well in uh fraction right so this is f f f over g of x is equal to f of x over g of x. Alright? But please take note, when you are dealing in fraction, you cannot have 0 on your denominator. Alright? You cannot have 0 in your denominator. Alright? So, we're going to talk about that one uh, in the latter discussions. And I hope that you're going to watch that one. Alright? So, uh, before we deal with that one, let's try to uh, deal with some examples of this uh, functions okay, all right oh, please wait not this one okay so let's deal with the first operation what is the first operation the first operation is addition add add okay, so let's have let's have um, a polynomial. Let's try to have f of x. This is your f of x. And this is your g of x. Okay? So, if you're going to deal with the two function, we could simply have, uh, let's just say your f of x is simply as 4x squared plus 2x plus 4. Alright. So for the g of x, let's deal with 2x squared plus 2x plus 8. How are we going to deal with this one? So it only means that when you have two functions and if you're going to add them both, when you have f and you have g, you add them and your Inputs are x, okay? So you could simply have f of x plus g of x, right? So what are you going to do? You're going to add these two functions by what? How are you going to add two functions? Hmm, tell me. How are you going to add these two functions? In adding two functions, remember... How do we add polynomials? Hmm. So it seems like if this is your f of x plus g of x, what is the value of f of x? The value of f of x is 4x squared plus 2x plus 4, okay, plus what is the value of g of x? 
plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 8. Correct? So, in these two polynomials, if we're going to add this both, how do we add these two polynomials? Oh, let's just say polynomials because we know that it's a function, no? But this form of, it is in form of um, expression or polynomial. Um, how are we going to add these two functions? By adding same terms, right? Knowing that we have same terms, what are those terms? We have the first term, second term, third term. We have the first term, second term, third term. How, what did you notice uh, what did you notice in the first term they have both degree right so we could add them both because they are similar terms so we could simply have 4x squared plus 2x squared next plus 2x to your 2x they are just the same, knowing that they have shared both degree. What's the degree? It's 1. So, it is 2x plus 2x. Correct? Plus 4. And plus 8. Our 4 and 8, these are constant. Correct? We have coefficient and variable. Though, we have also constant. So, let's combine them all. How do we combine them all? Mm. Sige po. If you have 4x squared plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4 plus 8, what's the value when you add these two terms? What's the value when you add these two terms? What is the value when you add these two terms? Sige nga po. Mm -hmm. mm. When adding these two terms, 4x squared plus 2x squared, that is 6x squared. Correct. Hmm, how about this one? Copy the operation. 2x plus 2x. 4x. Copy the operation. 4 plus 8, that is? Correct, that is 12. Okay po. So, therefore, this is our final answer. Or we could say that F, no, F plus G of X is equal to 6X squared plus 4X plus 4. Okay po. This is for the addition. Okay po. Uh, how about for subtraction? Let's deal with the subtraction, no? Okay, next. So, what if these two fractions, uh, these two functions, when we have f of x minus g of x? So, it turns out you could have f minus g of x, right? Okay. f minus g of x, correct? So, in this form, no, in this form, it only shows that you need you need to uh, subtract them all. But what if, for example, I will change the given, huh? I will change the given. But if uh, what if we change the given as like this one? I'm just going to erase some parts. Okay. Mm hmm And this is two. This is four. Okay. Okay. Mm. Let's erase this one. I'll see you. Let's try this one. Okay. Let's try this one first. For example, you have this given. Okay, so what is your f of x? What is the value of f of x? It's x squared plus 4x plus 4. This is your f of x, correct? Alright. 
Then what's your operation? It's subtraction. Subtraction. Where we are in subtraction already, ha? Huh? We are in subtraction. Subtraction. Then what is your g of x? The value of your g of x is 2x squared plus 2x minus 8. Correct? Correct? Okay. So let's deal with this one already. So what are the terms that are similar to each others? Uh, what are the terms that you could uh, mix up you no know, with the same terms that we or with the same terms no so we could have x squared and 2x squared so let's have x squared minus 2x squared minus 2x squared hi pa all right so next 4x what are we going to do we are going to add 4x minus minus 2x squared minus 2x squared okay, pa. okay. next is 4 minus minus negative 8 mm, negative 8 I'm going to ask you, if you have negative 8 already, you turn it out as positive. Why? And later, I'm going to explain, huh? It seems like you're going to add it already. Okay? So, in this case, you're going to add this 2, you're going to add this 2, and you're going to add this 2 already. Okay? So, when once you have uh, this number, uh, this uh, value, x squared minus 2x squared what what would the uh, what would be your answer x squared again x squared minus 2x squared what would be the value seems like 1 minus 2 the answer is correct negative x squared okay pa gets okay all right next how about this one? 4x minus 2x. The answer is 2x. Correct. 4x minus 2x. What's the answer? Seems like 4 minus 2. It's 2. Next. Positive. This is positive. This is positive. We're done with this one. Correct. Operation. The number. Then operation. This one. Okay. Then 4 plus 8, the answer is 12, right? So this is your final answer. Now, this is the explanation. Why did you add 4 and 8, sir? Mm -hmm. So from this highlighter, isn't it that... Ah, this one, huh? Isn't it that you have subtraction a while ago? This is the subtraction, correct? So from that subtraction, from that subtraction, ha. Huh? You're going to sub, uh, to distribute that uh, that operation to each term. Sub, uh, subtraction to your 2x. Okay po. Um, subtraction to your 2x. I 2x, 2x. I'm sorry, rather. Again, once again, once again. Uh, subtract your... Uh, this one. Subtract your subtraction. I uh, subtract... Distribute, distribute this uh, this subtraction sign to your 2x squared and distribute this subtraction to your 2x. Then, you're going to distribute another one, this subtraction, to your another, uh, to your negative 8. Alright, so, your positive 2x, when you add, no, when you add an operation, your positive 2x squared it would be come like this one, huh? I'm going to erase this part. It would become just like this. X squared to this one, correct? X squared, what else? Plus 4x 
plus 4 minus, because we, sub, uh, we distribute the uh, subtraction sign to your 2x squared, this one. So, it will become negative 2x squared. Then, distribute once again. Instead of having positive, you have negative, negative 2x. Then, you sub, uh, distribute once again. Instead of having negative, it will become positive. Okay po? That's why we combine this term to this term. This term to this term. Okay po? And this term to your last term. Alright, so if you will notice, before you subtract directly, if it has negative sign or the operation of subtraction, subtraction to subtraction will become to, uh, to positive. No, it seems like in... Uh, in Signs in operation when you distribute sign, uh, negative sign to another negative sign, it will become positive. Alright, so that is where, uh, how we deal with subtraction. Okay, alright, so how about Sir Jai? How about how are we going to deal when you have multiplication? Okay, so this will, uh, this will become a little bit tricky. Okay, and I know that some of you forgot how to multiply polynomials. Okay, so let's deal with um, um, monomial to monomial. Let's try to multiply 4x multiplied by 2x. What would be the answer? The answer is 8x squared. Correct? We multiply this coefficients. We multiply the variables. Okay? So, how about um, 2x plus 2 uh, multiplied by a monomial, binomial to your monomial? 2x. Okay. How about this one? How about this one? How do we multiply this monomial to your binomial? How? So... By multiplying or distributing your 2x to both terms. Okay, so 2x, again, uh, 2x multiplied or distributed to your 2x, that will become 4x squared, correct? So your 2x multiplied by 2, that is what? 4x. Okay, pa? All right? Okay, that is the final answer. What if, for example, this one? What if, Sir Jai, for example, x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 2? Huh. Of course, you know this one. If they are both binomial, what, you, what we simply do is to foil it out. First, foil, correct? Foil. First, x, square, x multiplied by your x, that is x squared, correct? Outer, x to your outer, or 2, x times 2, that is 2x. Plus, inner, 2 times x, that is 2x. Plus, 2 times 2 is 4. So, you could have x squared plus 2x plus 2x, that's similar term, that is 4x plus 4. Okay, so that's the final answer. That is when we are, when we are multiplying a binomial, monomial, and FOIL method, most likely, no? But what if, Sir Jai, for example, no? But what if we multiply three terms already. Uh, do you still remember that one? Hmm. For example, let's have this term. We have x squared plus 4x plus 4 multiplied by binomial. Well, let's say x plus 2. x plus 2. Mm. How do we deal with this one? This one. Mm. 
You still remember? Not, not anymore? Mm. In order for us to multiply these two polynomials or two expressions, first term, you multiply that one to all of the terms that you have. x times x squared, that is x cubed, correct? x cubed. Then x multiplied by 4x, that is what? 4x squared. x multiplied by 4, that is 4x. Next, 2 multiplied by x squared, that is 2, I'm sorry, that is 2x squared, correct? That is 2x squared. Next, 2 multiplied by 4x, that is 8x. Next, 2 multiplied by 4, that is 8, correct? Now, from the final terms that you have, okay, from the fi final terms that you have, uh, how do we deal with them? Once again, look for the highest degree. And the highest degree is the 3, correct? So, you could have x cubed. x cubed, then, you still see any cube or any term that is raised into the third power. Can you see anything? None, of course. So what are you going to do? Deal with the second degree, which is 4x squared and 2x squared. Right? So we are going to add them both already or combine the similar terms. So for, uh, positive 4x plus 2x. That is what? That is correct. So that is 6x squared. Okay, pa? So, we are done with this one, we are done with this one, and this one. So, what is the next one? If you're done with the cube, we are done with the squared. We are done with the squared, no? So, if you're done with the 3, 2, we deal with the first degree or the variable that doesn't have exponent or squares, no? So, if you will notice any variables, s raised to the power of 1. Po. So, therefore, you have 4x plus 8x. Okay, so 4x plus 8x, what would be the answer? The answer is 12x. Okay, so 12x. Correct. So we could cancel it already. We are done with it already, right? So about this one? Positive 8. So let's try to deal with positive, I'm sorry, positive 8. So therefore, you have the final answer. Po, okay? So, this is your final answer. Are we clear? Alright. So, this is for the multiplication. So, how do we deal with multiplication of functions? No, Is that every term that you have, even though it's binomial or tra a trinomial or polynomial, every term, you distribute that one to the other polynomials. Uh, just like this one. You multiply this one. To this one, to this one. Multiply this one, to this one, and to this one. Okay? So, same goes by to the other one. Multiply then. Then, after you multiply that one, that's the time you're going to combine the all similar terms po, or common terms. Okay po? Clear? Alright. Let's have the other example. For division let's have another example do you still remember as i mentioned last time no all our all of our topics are connected okay so do you still remember how to divide polynomials mm. do you still remember all right so what if your f of x no what if your what if your f of x is x squared plus 4x plus uh, 4. And your g of x is x plus 2. Okay? So, if we are in division, we simply have a function will be multiplied, uh, will be divided by, for uh, will be divided by another function, correct? 
So your f of x will be divided by g of x. Or in other words, um, it will be divided like f divided by g. The first function will be divided by the uh, will be divided by the other function, wherein x is will be your input. Or somehow we could represent that one in a fraction form, and you know how to deal with fraction form. Okay, po. This is your numerator. This is your denominator. All right. So once we have this kind of format already, let's deal with them. What would be the value of your f of x? The value is x squared the va plus 4x plus 4. Correct? Right. So, what is your g of x? Hmm. g of x is simply as x plus 2. Do you still remember how to divide polynomials? Alright, so this is where we are going to use that topic all right so in this term let's try to put it in a long division form okay so we have x squared plus 4x plus 4 right then your divisor is x plus 2 how do we divide a polynomial to another polynomial so let's deal with the variable only correct okay so if you're going to deal with the variable already how many x no would you have in x squared mm. how many there are two correct but remember remember in fundamentals addition subtraction multiplication division correct if the opposite operation of addition is subtraction and the opposite opposite um the opposite uh operation of multiplication is division in terms of variables okay this way in terms of variables you deal with this one when you are going to multiply two variables the exponent, you're going to add the exponent. Okay po? If you're going to divide two variables, you're going to subtract the exponents po. Okay? So, with this case, x divided, uh, x squared divided by x is only x. X po. Okay? But where are we going to put this x? Where? We're going to input that one in here po. Okay po? Aligned with the 4x. So, after getting that one, we are going to multiply the x to your binomial. Okay po? x times x, the answer is x squared. Correct. x times 2, the answer is 2x. Right? Positive 2x. Okay. So, if this is your quantity, you subtract that one. Okay? So, x squared minus x squared, of course, the answer is? 0. Then, 4x minus positive 2x. The answer is positive 2x. Correct? Mm. Okay. So, in this case, you bring down 4. Positive 4. Alright. So, let's deal with this one. How many x are there in 2x? Only 1. So, variable, the, exponents of the, ex the exponent of x. The exponent of x is 1 and the exponent of x is 1 so therefore we're going to subtract uh we're going to subtract 1 minus 1 of course it's 0 okay and we know that when a variable or any number any number for example let's say a is raised to 0 or 2 raised to 0 any uh variable or any term which has the uh exponent of 0 we know that it has the equivalence of 1. Okay, po? So, therefore, you will have positive 2. Okay? Positive 2 already. Because once you have 2x, if it's 0, of course, it will become 2, then 1. Correct? This is your 1. 
right? So two times one is simply as two. So that's why it's two. So once you have two, you sub you multiply that one to your x and you multiply to your two or distribute it. Okay, so two times x, the answer is two x. Two times two, the answer is four or positive four. Then you subtract two x minus two x, the answer is zero. Four minus four, the answer is zero as well. So therefore, you don't have any remainders, right? So therefore, your final answer is x plus two. Okay, po gets that is where the uh, operations for a functions no wherein you're going to divide two functions already hi pa clear is it clear all right so um with that one let's deal with the other topic which would be the composition of function okay so when we say composition of function Okay, so please take note, no? when we say the function or the composition of a function is a function, it simply den uh, it only denotes that a function would be the input of the main function. Please take note that the input of the inner function would be x still. Okay, for, so when we have this symbol, f circle g, Okay, or this one, f circle g, okay, f of g of x, because later I'm going to show you already, f circle g, wherein their input is x, it could be represented into this kind of form. Okay, if you will notice, this g of x is a function, correct? g of x and we know that f of x instead of having x inside instead of having x inside we input uh, the input of the outer function the input of uh, the outer function is the g of x okay, pa? Uh, i'm going to show it in different color g of x okay po all right so i'm going to uh, deal with this one with different color so that it will not be hard for you okay so if you will notice that is where are we going already okay so it only denotes that the x inside the domain is the input of the g okay where in this g of x or this function or the g of x is the input of the outer function or the f of x. Okay po? Once again, the domain of g of x or g is the x. That's the one. But the domain of f is the g of x already. Okay? So how are we going to uh, show that one into some some points okay some some examples let's deal with this example first example is that you have the function or f of x is equal to 2x minus 3 okay, to? okay pa? f of x uh, is equal to 2x minus 3 while your g of x is equal to x plus 1 wherein you are getting the, uh, the domain of these functions wherein f circle g or f of g of x this one f of g of x okay po okay po f of g of x instead of saying f of x should be f of g of x okay po so in this in this case, how are we going to deal with this one? Alright, so therefore, what is your f of x? What is your f of x? Of course, the x will be g of x already. Okay, so therefore, focus first whatever the value of your g of x and what are the g of x? This one, correct? 
So, what is the f of x? That is 2x minus 3. And the input, when we say input, isn't it? That is the x. And the value of x would be the g of x. So, therefore, in your x, instead of having x, oh, let's, let's, let's write it down. So, instead of having x, you will put g of x. Okay po? g of x gets minus 3. And what is the value of g of x? Uh, let's try to write it in this color. So, 2. Uh, what's the value of g of x? That is x plus 1. So, it is x plus 1. Okay. Then, from your f of x. And what is your f of x? That is 2x minus 3. The x is your g of x. The x is your g of x. And what is the value of g of x? x plus 1. Okay po? We substitute the value of g of x to x plus 1. So therefore, you could now uh, find the composite of these two functions. So in, with that, let's have the distribution of these two to the binomial. Alright, so 2 times x, that is 2x. And 2 times 1, that is simply as 2. Minus 3. And 2 minus 3 is simple as 2x minus 1 because it's negative 1 already, right? So, in other words, in a neat, uh, in a neat manner, no, this is the computation. Okay? Right? So, this is another example. Letter B. What if, no, we have G of F of X or we are going to find the composite function of G where in your domain will be f of x. A while ago, you have f of x. That will be your outer function. And the domain or the input is g of x. Okay? But this time, instead of having the outer domain, which is of f of x, let's have g of x. And instead of having x, the x would be, your x would be, f of x okay so let's try to focus first what is your g of x your g of x is x squared plus one and the domain is x right so uh instead of having x to your g of x instead of having x you will uh, substitute the value of f of x Okay, so it will become f of x, f of x squared. Okay, this is the one. The value of x is f of x gets plus 1. Okay, and with that case, that is squared. Huh? What is the value of f of x? We know that the value of f of x is x minus 3. So therefore, x minus 3 squared okay plus one okay pa? okay so when you have squared to your binomial it seems like x minus three times x minus three correct so therefore we could simply find the foil uh, we could simply see the answer by using the foil method and we know that when we are going to foil this out it will become, first term is x squared, right? x squared. Outer term, x times negative 3, it is negative 3x, negative 3x. Inner, negative 3 to x, it is negative 3x. And outer, negative 3 to your negative 3, it's positive 9. So with that case, no? with that case, what would be the best? option to do mm, what would be the best option to do first is to multiply this one first is to square this first term that is x squared already and square the last term what is the last term 3 so it will become positive 9 
How about for your inner term? That would be negative 6x knowing that 2 times 3 times x. And you have negative 2 times 3 x. And that will be negative 6x. Okay pa. And you still have this one, don't forget. So plus 1. Okay pa. So therefore, is this the final answer? Is this the final answer? No. We still have this 9 and 1. So this is the constant. So therefore, you could have x squared minus 6x plus 10. Okay pa. This would be your final answer po. Are we clear? Gets already? Alright. So this is the uh, solution. No? The neat solution po. Alright. Okay. So how about another example? No? So what if this is your... I'm sorry. This is your example f of x is equal to 2 over x while your g of x is 1 over x. How are we going to deal with this one? We know that denominator can't be 0. Correct? It shouldn't be 0. So how are we going to deal with this one? Uh, let's have it in this way. So g of x, g of f of x, g out of f of x, f of x. Okay, so first is to identify what is your g of x. Your g of x is 1 over x. And your x, instead of having x, you will have f of x. Uh, let's try, let's write it down as f of x, okay? Alright, so let's, subs let's substitute the value of f of x. Okay, but what is the value of f of x? The value of f of x is 2 over x, correct? And this is the greater uh, fraction, huh? 2 over f of x, right? So, uh, with this one, how do we deal with the x? What is the value? Or, uh, we know that the denominator can be 0. Right, because once you have that one, it may turn out into different answer. Because we cannot just simply turn it into that manner, or we are just uh, we cannot just simply uh, put it out in that kind of manner. Correct. So in that case, we could use the uh, uh, this term. You could simply conjugate these two terms by the reciprocals or multiply both numerator and denominator by the re reciprocal of your denominator. What is your denominator? Two, 2 over x, right? So multiply both your numerator and denominator by the reciprocal of your denominator. The reciprocal is x over 2, correct? Right? So, multiply both numerator and denominator by x over 2. Okay? So, in that case, your numerator will become 1 multiplied by x minus 2. Correct? And in the denominator, it will become numerator to numerator, denominator to denominator. So, it will become 2x over 2x. And we know that 2x over 2x is just simply as 1. Okay? Simple as 1. So therefore, any number or any value, for example 6, has the denominator of 1 will be simple as 6. Okay? Or A divided by 1 is simple as A. So therefore, in this part, it contains a denominator which is 1. So it will become 1 times x squared and we know when we multiplied 1 times x over 2 rather no 1 multiplied by x over 2 is simple as x over 2 okay pa gets gets already huh so this is what are we going to do in order for us to be uh, 
in order for us to know what would be your composite function. Pa. Are we clear? Alright, so this is a the computation part. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are telling that x a uh, 2 over x no should not have 0. Or x shouldn't have uh should not be equal to zero. Okay, pa? Gets? Alright, so how about this one? Let's try to evaluate wherein your x has the value of six. Mm. This is where the x has the value already. So therefore, the x will be represented as 6 already. So therefore, all of the x's will be represented as 6. But before you represent all x's by 6, let's try to deal with the computation. Now, this is the computation. Ha? From your f circle of g or f of g of x, it will be transferred out as f f of x that is your outer function and your inner function or domain is g of x right so try to find what is your f of x first f of x the f of x is what's your f of x that is just simple as square root of x right so square root of x and your x as your domain no? x will be replaced by g of x correct so instead of x, it will become g of x, correct? And try to ask yourself already, what is the value? What's the value of g of x? The value of g of x is x minus 2, right? So therefore, let's substitute the value of g of 2, and that is x minus 2. x minus 2, correct? Alright. So in that case, that would be the final one. But we know that value of your x is 6 so therefore the value of x will be replaced or substituted by 6 6 minus 2 here and we know that it's 4 and the square root of 4 is simple as 2 okay po clear all right next one hmm, this one no so we have another example so we have uh, f of x is equal to 6x minus 1 and g of x is equal to x plus 3 over 2 wherein the outer domain uh, w the outer function is g and your inner uh, function is f so therefore g of x instead of x you will have f of x and focus to your g of x right so g of x so it will become x plus 3 over 2 and knowing that instead of having g of x instead of x you have f of x right so instead of having x you place, replace that one as f of x uh, f of x correct now what's the value of your f of x that is 6x minus 1, correct? So, in that case, we're going to substitute that one by 6x minus 1. In that case, can we just simply add? The, you will not distribute this one huh, because it has operation already, correct? Mm. In that case, we could simply add these terms as negative 1 plus 3, the answer is? Ah, oh, negative 1 plus 3, the answer is 2, positive 2, correct. So, therefore, you have 6x plus 2, right? Alright, so in that case, can you cancel out something? None. Can you cancel by 2? No, you cannot cancel that one uh, yet because you have operation. What operation? Addition, no? You cannot cancel... Um, terms with your denominator if it has operation so what you should do can you see in this term or this is a binomial right can you see any common factor with the two terms for the first term which is 6x no to your second term which is 2 can you see any common factor the factor would be what 2 6x could be factored out as 2 times 3x correct 
So instead of having 6x plus 2, uh, plus 2, you could factor it out as 2 times 3x plus 1, correct? Plus 1 over 2, right? And with that case, we could now cancel knowing that it's multiplication, right? So therefore, you could simply have 3x plus 1. But is this the final answer? No, because we still have the value of and we know that when we sub substitute the value of x, no, instead of having this part, isn't it that it is f of uh, g of f of x, your x inside your f, it will become 2. Okay, po. It only shows that your x will be substituted as 2. Okay, po. Clear? So, let's, ha uh, let's try to turn it out as 2. Uh, let's try to turn it out as 2. 3 times, instead of having x, no? Instead of having x, we could have 2 plus 1. Okay? Plus 1. So, 3 times 2 is 6. So, 6 plus 1 is 7. So, the final answer is 7 po. Okay, or we could just simply ask, say that the uh, g of f of x no, is equal to 7, where, wherein x is equal to 2. Or, if you're going to read this one, g of f of 2. Okay po? In this case, it could be g of f of x, wherein x has the value of 2. Or in this case, g of f of 2. Okay po? Gets? Alright. So, in that manner, I do hope that you already, uh, you already understand what is the concept of this uh, uh, function operation. Okay po? I do hope that you already understand what is this function operation and as well as the composition of function po, no? And I do hope that for the following videos that we are going to discuss, I hope that you are going to watch that one up until the end, knowing that we are going to discuss some of the uh, topics that we need to accomplish uh, this quarter. Okay, most likely the limits and such. And uh, I hope that you really uh, understand. And if you have concerns, questions, don't hesitate to uh, ask me or send uh, a PM or comment in the comment section. And I hope that we could see on the other video. Alright, so with that one, thank you and God bless. See you in our next video. Bye!